All right, so I had, um, there was a bunch of stuff like going in my head. And then I saw a video that I wanna watch. So I'm gonna watch this video and then I'm gonna come back and record after I watch this video. Some video that's out um, on brighteon.com and these two guys are talking about what's about to go down. They put it all together or something. So I'm gonna go in and watch that, but there was way too much going on in my head to add that on top of it. So I was like, okay, I gotta go get this stuff out and then I'm gonna go watch that. One of the things though that this lady was talking about with this video, she said, um, yeah, they're predicting there's gonna be a lot of suicide. A lot of suicide's about to go down. I was like, chick, I've been saying that since 2015. But I still want to go hear what they're saying because the thing is, is see that people are just waking up. You know, that's the hard part is I saw this stuff coming and they're just now seeing it. So it is, um, you know, that's, that's a difficulty for me where I'm like, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, through my experience, through my perspective of this, you know, it's transformative and uh, you go through the part of seeing like, God damn, nobody listens to me. Nobody respects my opinion. Nobody, you know, you have to go through all of that, like the, the, um, shelling of ego. <laughs> it's all out there. It's like, okay. <laughs> so then, um, once you go through, that and this whole part of like you know having to accept it like there's not really anything you can do you can sit and stomp your feet around and have a fit but or you know there's a lot of toxic behaviors you can do to you know come at this that's not you know i'm i'm more about like don't look at it what am i supposed to be seeing what am i supposed to be learning here and so the um the thing that is funny about it is so you go through that part of having to see how they see you. But now when things turn, now, because, you know, like, I, well, I've been going through it, it is like, man, why? You know, did I do some horrible crime in a past life? You know, like, what What do I have to keep seeing? Why do I have to live this, re this experience from this perspective, especially this very isolated perspective you know, and where people don't understand what you see. And so, you know, there's that whole thing where I'm like, you know, you know, but I see like the process of it. But the thing is that they were showing me this morning is like in that gradual gradation, or, you know, the, the movement of color, the movement of this, the energy that it will go through that thing where I have to see you know, and it could get stuck there. If you're not paying attention, it will stay going the same way until you start paying attention. Like that's one of the things I want to talk about. But so as you are, um, you know, processing what it feels like, you know, how does it feel to have people look at you like that? How does it feel? Why does it bother me? Why do I care? You know, you gotta go through all of that. But so as it turns, now I see how it is going to be their part that they have to see. They are going to see their own biases. It's like I am going to be a catalyst in a lot of people's lives of like how they looked at me. Then it's going to be how they have to look at themselves. It's, it's trippy. And I don't know if it's making sense. Probably to some people. If it doesn't make sense right now, it probably will at some point when you start seeing this stuff play out. But anyways, I was like, and they've showed me that before. But how I saw it this morning was a lot more how it all goes in together. And um, so there was a few things I wanted to talk about. One thing is too is I know some of these weird smells, because think about this. So we're being sprayed, you know, like I've said, we've got fucking dead trees all over the goddamn place. And no telling what all is being sprayed on what. And um, so this morning when I was doing this fire, it had this such a toxic, horrible smell. And I was like, oh my gosh, some of these chemicals on this wood, because this is all local wood, you know, the guy, the loggers go down, I think, this guy's a logger, so, I, you know, I don't know. It seems to me that the developers use the loggers to come in and cut their stuff. And I don't know if they get to take some. I don't know. It depends on the contract or what. 
you know, right now they're just going to town over there cutting further, which means they're going to just start going back more with their roads, which is so fucking ridiculous. You know, you move out rural and then the developers just fucking follow right behind. Oh, people want to move out there? Hell yeah, I'm going to make some money. I was like, God, I'm so sick of the fucking greed in this place. Like, I swear to God, it's just so obvious, so disgusting. But anyways, um, so, you know, I think some of the smells are coming off of the fucking wood. And then it's like, oh, my God, I'm breathing this shit in. Because seriously, this is something that, you know, is quite obvious to me. Because, uh, you know, I've gone so much natural with my products and stuff. And uh, in my eating and all of that stuff, like I have, I, you know, if I compare myself to the average Joe, I think I have got a minimal amount of chemicals going into me compared to so many other people. So many other people who, who use, um, what is that stuff? Like pre-made food or uh, anything like the fucking boxes and cans. Like, man, when people are opening up and bugs and all sorts of garbage and shit is coming out of their stuff, like it's it's a corporate uh, processed food you know so the more processed your food is the more you're going to be affected because the more that they process it the more they put their goddamn gunk in it so um the the people who eat a lot of that and eat out i'm i'm shocked when i see tiktoks and stuff there's so many people that still just go to fast food all the time still just going out to restaurants all the time and that's what I'm saying is like, because they're not waking up to some of this stuff, it's going to hurt when that stuff crashes and you can't go out and run and get a restaurant and get DoorDash and all this stuff that these people have become dependent on because they do not take care of themselves. They become dependent. The dependency is going to come up and bite them in the ass. And that is that holding on to what was there instead of taking control of your own health and I've been having so many conversations with my one daughter yesterday she was crying she was calling me and she was crying begging me to come and take care of her she was like just have someone watch Stella and just fly over here and I'll get a hotel because I'm not allowed at her house because the other daughter's not speaking to me so and then I'll get a hotel and we'll just stay there until she gets better it's like I can't or at least a couple days it's like I can't just leave I would be so stressed out to leave Stella here sleeping by herself like and I don't want to fly like I'm the stuff I see about that hell no I would I'd absolutely have to drive and I'm not having some guy who's struggling with his own health jet me around no thank you and, and and then the the fucking chaos out in public that is one of the things i really wanted to talk about because it is fucking mind blowing i swear to god i don't know what fucking tiktok has done to me <laughs> where they've put me like it is so absurd what they do to some of our accounts it's so frustrating but i know you know energetically it's going to turn the other direction so i've got to keep at peace with it but it's very frustrating but so right now whatever this stuff i'm seeing and maybe i've watched a couple of these videos a little too long because i'm just like what 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 it is mental i swear to god people have lost their goddamn minds i swear to god it is you know and there's gonna be tons of of um you know divorce there's gonna be tons of families uh, fracturing there's gonna be tons of suicide there's gonna be tons of horrible murder like outrageous shit. It's all going to be just keep being outrageous and absurd and disgusting and horrible. And so I don't know. There seems to be this whole standoff. And this this is the kind of shit that will lead to, lead to civil war. Like seriously. Like this is ridiculous shit. So you have two people now out all over the place. I think they've got a hashtag now going, Karen in the wild. And uh, so uh, they will go out and you have these two people in a store, in a parking lot. Like I'm seeing them all over the place and they're arguing. It's always one of them is a older white woman. And a lot of them are overweight, bitter looking, kind of angry, older white women. And, uh, you know, the people who are dividing against them don't see the pain and suffering that lives inside of them. 
you know, I can see straight through them and I can see, you know, why they are the way they are. And uh, so they are, um, I don't know, it's like so a victim mentality. So, you know, I've had them as patients in hospitals and stuff. I mean, they cry about everything. They feel beat down. They feel sad. They feel rejected. You know, it's all of these things, that these people. That's why I keep trying to get a point across is going out into the world right now while people are purging their pain, bringing it to the surface is a dangerous place. Very dangerous place. It's not a place to go out like, hey, let's go have supper. You know, I think, you, you know, no telling what the hell somebody, some angry weight person, you just look at them wrong. And they will be back there putting their pubes in your food. Like, fuck that shit. And besides the fact that there, there's people who sneeze and cough in their food just to be dicks. There's people who wipe their boogers in your food. Like, it's, it's, it's absurd. And, and then besides the fact, I swear to God, you start cooking the food at your house, you'll see, you can, it tastes so much better. You know, it's way better. They still use process. They still, you know, whatever, unless, you know, which I think is going to kind of become a thing is, and I think it might already be in some places, but more of this, um, farm restaurants, you know, like, like a farm like, say you go, because people are starting to really try to figure out, like, what are we supposed to do? Well, we got to leave the cities. We got to caravan out and start, you know, what they used to do. We got to go as a group, find an area, help each other build homes, and then build a community. Figure out our bartering system. Figure out our agriculture. I mean, it's been done over and over and over and over through history. That's all we got to do. But people are like, well, can I take my car? Or can I, you know, I, it's like people don't understand what life is about. Even when I was sitting here thinking about moving, I'm all over the place already. But there's so many things. Hopefully I can wrap them all up and get back on what I was talking about. But, you know, with the the movies and the pervy stuff, you know, there's that how movies have moved into such violence and over sexualized, you know, and that is why, you know, I, I stick on lifetime and classic movies because I'm just, I don't like it. It turns me off and it, I feel like they're shoving something down my throat. I always have. I've always thought it was weird. I remember back when I was like 18 and cable started and they started putting a uh, porn on cable and my teenage brothers would stay up late and they'd want to watch it and stuff like that and there was parental guy and then all of a sudden all that stuff's just on cable all the time then it's just on the tv then it's just in every single fucking movie and it, it, I don't like it I don't want to sit there with my kids or my parents and watch people you know pound it out and make out and do all sorts of deviant shit like I don't yeah, it, it's programming and it bothers me. And it, the thing is, is um, just as I know that there's a difference and I can make a choice for myself, I can go like, well, I'm not going to watch this mainstream crap, this more current movies. That's why I don't know who a lot of people are even, but they'll watch these older movies or lifetime movies. Like I know who actors are, who people don't have any clue that they even existed, you know, and they're great. And so, you know, my perspective, my reality is very different. The thing, the problem in the whole scenario is that the people who are younger, they don't understand that there's a choice there. They just only know the more current stuff, the stuff they've grown up on, which doesn't give them a choice. It's just down their fucking throats all the time. Violent sex, violent sex, you know, and... People cross that over and sex becomes violent and you start having a lot of rape and murder and uh, all sorts of stuff going on in the world where people need to be over somebody else, that uh, victim, uh, predator, you know, it starts creating that in society, you know, but it's up to people to go like, hey, this isn't, this isn't working. And, and then they, you know, have these like right now what they're even going to do in England they've already announced it like they're going to take this this town and they're going to divide it into six districts 
and restrict the people. You're only allowed to move in your district. Like they're going all in. And this is the absurdity I talked about, you know, that they're going to keep showing it and showing it until there becomes the point that the people become so outraged that they do something, but they just keep sliding it in and sliding it in. And it's going to keep being disgusting and absurd until the people stand up. And I have seen some footage of people standing up. Like, it looks like a whole entire city is out there in some places. I think Brazil, maybe Venezuela. I don't know. There's some shit going on in some places. China, uh, Iran, like all these places. But America, you know, we're, we're pretty used to Applebee's, Happy Hour, Walmart, you know. We'll just kind of sit back on our couch, play some video games, and bitch to our friends. It's like, come on, people. You got to want more. And we don't have to go, you know, and march on the Capitol like those, like there's even anyone there. Uh, but what we got to do is take our power back and go, fuck you guys. I didn't sit here and do this shit with you. And go out and start building our own communities. And, and seeing that is where I think, you know, fresh food. So you have a community that has a big co-op. Uh, garden say and everybody can go and work in the garden and take what food they need for their family and everybody you know is cooperative in their uh, community that's the thing what people have to see Cooper cooperation is much different than corporation corporations are about controlling us cooperation is where we work together for a common goal and so those kind of gardens and stuff like that is um, where I think like fresh little restaurants, little pop-up kind of, I think that's what's going on now. You know, this fresh, the farm to table kind of little pop-ups or something, but I mean like a real restaurant that, you know, cooks food that is grown right there that is seasonal, limited menu, like that kind of stuff. I think, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is going to change about the whole uh, thing, but it's going to get better. Like uh, people have to see we're not going to lose something because we didn't have uh, what we had wasn't fulfilling us. What we'll have is less, but it will be more fulfilling. So, you know, and it's way better to ha be fulfilled like, I keep trying to make my one daughter understand this with her um, guardian daughter, which she's going to come and stay with me. But that she's always, because this girl, you know, she's come from a trauma life. Otherwise, you know, she would not be in the predicament that she's in. And so the, um, the whole thing is, is that, um, I got to think of what I was about to say. Um something about um oh because uh, so she's empty right you gotta think about this so you come from a trauma life you're very empty inside nobody has been building you up showing you how to build yourself up showing you how to self-soothe showing you how to take care of yourself none of that stuff when you come from a dysfunctional home you know, you're not taught that stuff because there are everybody in the house is just trying to survive. And that is how I grew up. Like I said, like, so I had a lot of awkward moments as an adult where people knew to do things that I had no idea. Like nobody taught me that. Like, and uh, so, you know, and I've heard of other people who have come from those kinds of, you know, more traumatic kind of households and no shame to anybody. I'm not, you know, saying all oh, my parents fucked me over, you know, you know, they, I, I look at things in a much more spiritual way. And, um, you know, there's a reason why you go through that stuff. There's a reason why there's all these different things happening for all different people. There's a purpose behind it. So, anyways, um, but you come out of those situations as very empty inside. And then in this dysfunctional society where they teach you to go outside of yourself to fill yourself up. And, and then you see nothing will fill you up. It's just this constantly trying to put stuff in to make yourself feel better. And then sometimes it will give you something like a little charge, a little drug, a little high. It will give you this little like uh, endorphin rush. And that's what shopping did for me. And, uh, you know, so you go out and then you feel so good. And then you're always chasing that high to feel so good, like whatever it is. Like I still... Uh, you know, I think I'm still like that with thrift stores. I get so excited because I found this great deal for three dollars. <laughs> so, you know, but, uh, you know, it's a lot different than going out and spending a lot of money 
doing that. When you start putting stuff on credit cards and you gotta just get more and more and more, you know, and that is one thing that a lot of people, you know, have done. A lot of people are still doing, you know, and Christmas brings that out in everybody. So that is, uh, you know, a dysfunctional way that we have existed for a long time. But so you take a kid who's empty and you start giving them all these things. And so a parent or a sub parent or stand in parent or whatever can be like, oh, well, you know, I just want you to have these things. I want you to feel better, you know, and all that stuff. But when you're going at it on the superficial, artificial level, it is uh, it's like an insatiable uh, need at that point it isn't really filling you up because once you get filled up you don't have it to constantly be like I need more I need more I need more you know you feel good and so you know um when she is now like oh well we'll get your nails done we'll get you this we'll get you that and all this expensive stuff and then it starts being well the girl starts you know well I want this and I want that and demanding these things it was like, well, you, you know, now you got her strung out on the drugs. You know, she's jonesing at this point. It's like, I got to have more. But I'm not telling her that. I'm just explaining that, you know, she is because she's empty inside. And all those things are temporary highs. They make you feel good for a quick second. And so she wants to feel good again. But, you know, my theory on life is you got to, you know, feel, feel up from the inside. You got to see all the good things about you. When you start filling up from the inside, you see there's a lot of stuff you don't need. A lot of shit you don't need. It is that is part of the the programming in this consumerism world and the consumerism the whole entire thing is all about taking your energy you know and you can see like if you go on TikTok you can see like uh, people just um their energy is all given to this system this world their drama their jobs their families you know all of it every bit of their energy is drained. There's nothing left for themselves. And this is what I was trying to tell my daughter yesterday because she's sick again, you know, and she's crying and she wants me. And it's hard. It's fucking hard, you know, to know people are dropping dead and, uh, you know, that the people who have these things to get sick every couple of weeks, it's like, mother fuck. But they also were living this 3D world. And this is what I keep trying to tell her. This is what is killing you. You can't run around over here, run around over there. There's all this sickness yet. You're traveling internationally. Like you got to go have that vacation. I'm like, how does that make sense? And there's all these people are just sick and death. And, uh, you know, and besides the fact, you know, she's not even taking into account the, the um, all of the chaos that is happening out in all these different countries and stuff. Like things are blowing up over the whole entire world. And so, um, I, I just had a, a couple of things come like rushing into my head with some with volcano and earthquakes and stuff. So I don't know. I'll see what, but anyways, um, so, um, uh, you know, trying to get her to understand you are not giving yourself any time or any of your energy. Your energy is going out. There's nothing coming back in. You're not going and taking time to take care of yourself. And this is so foreign to people in the 3D. They don't really understand what you're saying. Once you move free from that and you move out and then you see like, oh, taking care of myself. Like self-care is just like the, you know, the little, the little line or whatever, the, the campaign slogan or something. But there really is a whole thing to having to tune into yourself, listen to yourself. What do you need? How do you, you know, there's so much that is about self that you have to take care of. And that's what they're trying to distract you from and get you to chase something. And the people in the 3D are chasing, 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 getting sicker and sicker. You know, they got to take these because they got to participate. They got to be a good one, you know, and then they're just running and running on that hamster wheel. Just, oh, I'm getting nowhere. Where am I going? Where am I going? And it's like, oh my God. And so that's what I was trying to get her to understand is, uh, you know, her role in her life of why she keeps getting sick 
and uh, and then the, the toxins and stuff. I keep telling her to smoke cigarettes, and it took her a long time. She smoked cigarettes when she was a teenager, and it took her a long time to get off of them. And back then, I was stop smoking, stop smoking. Now I'm like, smoke a cigarette. When she's sitting there crying, telling me she's in so much pain, and every time I get up in the morning and my body hurts, and I go and smoke a couple puffs off that thing, it's miraculous. So, and, uh, you know, uh, there's no accidents that right now, now they are banning uh, menthol nicotine. They've already banned um, other ones. Like the only thing left is the surplus. So I still have about, I don't know, more than a half a pack of cigarettes. I think I've only smoked, you know, five or six of these cigarettes. I don't know. I'd have to look. Um, but... You know, uh, I mean, they're going to keep on doing this. There's no, I mean, there's, uh, there's no accidents. You know, I just saw that guy and that those videos keep coming back up and I keep feeling like this way. And then I go and do that. Like, and I tried to explain to her that there's certain poisons in our environment that there is, uh, and there's natural things because it's the same with cannabis that in all these doctors out right now trying to show that cannabis cures the two C's, both of them. And that's what I was trying to tell her. I said, you need to smoke a couple puffs off the cigarette and then go get one of your sister's joints and smoke a couple hits off of that. And she said, I don't want to be high. And I was like, you'll probably just go to sleep. You only need like one or two. You know, I could, like you're going to be sitting there for six hours stoned out or something, you know. You just go smoke a little. It's something in these, in nicotine and cannabis that is, you know, is uh, an antidote to some of this stuff that they are putting attacking us with like and you know when i'm sitting here being so uh with the chemicals you know getting so many of them out of my environment yet my hair is falling out by the handfuls every day you know so how and i do hear i mean the frequency is loud as fuck it's so loud so, you know, to me, and I know whatever there's, I mean, our sky is such a weird color where I'm at. It's such a weird color. Our weather is so junked up. It's nothing like how it should be. And <coughs> which, how do we even know what sh anything should be? Because it's all been manipulated for so fucking long. It's so fucking our whole lives. I was thinking about this last night. I was thinking it's so mental. And this is another thing that kids nowadays don't understand is that back when I was younger, it was a big open blue sky and big puffy white clouds and a big orange sun up in the sky and everything was wholesome and clean. And then as time has gone on, our skies have turned into toxic chemical garbage dumps and our clouds have become distorted and especially right now, while they've jacked up these frequencies, as the clouds are, you know, making weird shapes. And then they're crossing over them, trying to hide the stuff up there with all of the more chemicals. It's like it's so mental. And, they, you know, kids don't understand because they don't know the difference. They don't know what it was and what they've done. It's like, oh, my God, it's just so frustrating. So much of the stuff. And then they keep all the young people as divided as they can against the old people because the old people are the problem. The old people are the problem because the old people see through the fucking bullshit. Some of them, not all of them. My mom, every, my mom's constantly telling me about, you know, her old friends that are just like total participants in every single thing. Just like that last luncheon that she went to, she said her and her friend weren't going back. They couldn't sit and listen to all these people talk about all the benefits and how great it is and how they're running down and getting another one. And, and the people just don't realize like you are, you have consented because you are turning your health over to them. They are not making you healthier. They are not telling you anything to do to make yourself better. They are giving you something that is a band-aid that will, it's like a little atom bomb inside your body. And uh, people just keep on and keep on and keep on. So anyways, but the, the stuff with this Karen in the wild, this is mental. I can't even tell you how many of these videos I've seen. And there is, so you have these two people who are screaming at each other and you only see one of them because each person you can see is videotaping the other. It reminds me of like, um, 
in the, uh, the usual suspects, I think it was, uh, one of those movies where all the people are suddenly in there all holding guns on each other, like, you know, they all just see each other as the enemy. And, you know, it's ridiculous. It's like, you guys are perpetuating this. You're perpetuating division. And it's 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 absurd. And I can't even, I swear to God, this is how absurd it has become as well. With And I don't know this whole girl's story. But just when you see these videos over and 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 over again. I'm like, oh my God, I was just walking in a parking lot and there was a man. I swear to God, I'm so scared right now. There was a man. He was just up there by the door. He was by the door. In the parking lot, I'm so scared right now. I'm not fucking shitting you. Over and over and over. This one too was the these two girls out on a walking path who started panicking because there was a man walking behind them. <laughs> what in the absurd fucking hell is going on in this world? Oh my God. Like back in the day, he used to, hey, how's it going? But uh, they're all, like, they're all traumatized. They're all so scared. And uh, there is such a huge amount of women who are petrified of men. Scared shitless. They think men should be removed from the planet. Then we would have a good, safe planet. I don't know in what world uh, that you've come up with this solution. But uh, so the, uh, the Karen thing, though. So you got these... People sitting in here just screaming at each other back and forth. Uh, I'm going to call the police. Good, do it. Call them. Well, I'm calling them right now. I need help. I need help. No, oh, I need help. I need help. It's like, what in the hell is going on? Like, is there a point to these videos? Like, it's just you two standing here making drama saying each of you need help and the cops need to come because you saw each other in a parking lot and somebody gave somebody a dirty look or something. Somebody came up and told me I, one of the, one of them, this was one. And this is to me, the, you know, no matter what, it's like everybody's got an ignore button. Start fucking using it. So this guy is, um, out in his little apartment place, whatever his condo home, uh, out in the greenery where they restrict for the dogs to go. So he's out there with his dog going potty. And uh, this white woman, and you can tell he's dark because you can see his hand and you can hear, you, you know, no matter what, you can tell a dot, you can tell there's some different tone in our voice, our diet, there's something different in how we talk. And uh, so. He um, is talking, she is, comes out with her husband. They're going bike riding. They got their helmets on, so right there. And uh, so they're going to go out. Now, that is the fucking um, the glitch in the Matrix. And all of a sudden, it's like you look at it, it's like, did she have a helmet on? And then you can see her with the helmet and without the helmet. It's all just fucking with our heads. But anyway, so... She is out there and she um, is telling him that he's trespassing. He's not allowed to let his dog poop there. And he's like, I can let my dog poop here. And these people are like, we know every single person that lives here. And the guy's like, well, obviously you don't. And then they're like, we know everybody and you're trespassing and you need to leave. Like those people were being dicks. But, you know, the guy didn't have to sit there and argue and record. Everybody needs to go viral. Look, I'm in a fight with somebody. Look at their real asshole. Like, or you could just choose to ignore them and, you know, take your dog, walk up to your apartment, you know, let them look like assholes. But instead, everybody's got to look like an asshole because everybody's got to stand out there. Oh, you're a bad one. No, you're, no, you, no. It's like, oh my God, you guys are childish. It is bizarre. And so, like, I don't know if I'm getting a million of these because I've watched one too long. And now I'm getting a million or if there's just so much of this going on. And I'm just in this dark space on TikTok where I keep seeing this, like, uh, husbands leaving. Their, well, I mean, I have seen women going. Uh, this was horrifying. Uh, these uh, two women. The women on the outside of the house were big black women. I mean, they look like they could kick some ass. And I don't, I couldn't see the people in the house. Um, one of the arms that came out, it looked like a white person, but I don't know. You know, the white person can be the husband stealer in there. He's got the 
or anything can be going on. Because the two women on the outside were fucking pissed. And they had big things like metal pipes or not baseball bats. It was shorter than that. But they were big like that. Bashing the windows out of these people's houses. I was like, dude, you're on camera. Like some of this stuff is like, is this being set up? Like who is filming this? Like you are getting, so is your friends filming you doing this? Because you do know this is evidence, right? Like this is a bizarro world. And so the they're up there um, bashing the windows out of this house. The door, someone comes to the door, they're screaming. This person is like, starts bashing through the door. It's like crazy. And then the video ends or something. And I wasn't going to go in and keep some of them. I'll go in and see like, is there more to the story? Like what's going on here? It is, um, it's crazy. And, uh, the, and then uh, you have all these women, like these video after video of these girls who are petrified because a man crossed their path. And it's like, <laughs> it's like that old black cat thing or something. It's like, oh, a man, he just walked right behind me. Oh, my God, I'm so scared. It's like, this is so mental. Oh, my God. Oh, I've had a lot of men walk in front of me. You don't have to be scared of every single one of them. You just have to have discernment. You have to have awareness. You have to be paying attention. Know which ones to be scared of. Know which ones not to be scared of. Like, Jesus Christ, this, the boy who cried wolf, they obviously did. There's a lot of stories, I think, that they, a lot of these people have never heard. You know, the chicken little, the boy who cried wolf, the the one with the dam. I can't think of the name of that one. And the um, emperor's new clothes. Man, I don't think that they know that one. Uh, you know, and it's so crazy, too. Just because that doctor guy keeps being on my mind, too. You know, he's so flamboyant, you know. He's, you know, who knows? For all I know, he had his skirt and high heels on, you know. I don't know if that... Top half definitely was cross-dressing. And uh, so the, um, you know, to go and think that a person is going to want a professional cross-dresser to come in and diagnose them and make decisions for their health is just absurd. Like maybe in your progressive community, you might have a whole group, you know, you'll have the, the fluffies or furries, the all these uh, other people who are lost in their identity, yeah, they would appreciate a doctor with your characteristics, but that is where you build communities, you know, like that. It isn't, you don't go out and be offended that the mainstream, everybody's not accepting of you. You have to accept yourself. You have to love yourself. And then it doesn't matter if other people do. You know yourself enough and you're confident in yourself. But people aren't confident in themselves and they're putting all these extreme, uh, you know, sides of themselves out there and then they are expecting the world to make them feel good about it it's like that's not how it works no when you you know know some history when you're different than anybody you got to put yourself out there and you got to be able to accept yourself and that's the real change that is what has changed our time throughout history is the the leaders the path pathwayers or whatever it's called you know the ones who walk the path first the ones who are willing to put themselves out there and uh, you know you have to have confidence because you know just in my case even you know being called crazy and stuff all the time and you know and then you know I, I mean right now like I've got to trust my my in, intuition my uh, conversations with the the other side so to even keep myself going and there's so much about where they want you to not focus on the physical focus on what they're telling you and it is i'm telling you uh, that they will tell you so much stuff like i swear to god we do not need a brain we do not need all we need to do is be connected they tell you every fucking move to make I swear. And one thing that I have noticed is they won't sit there and just keep telling and telling and telling you. Typically, you know, they'll say it once and then, you know, a few minutes later, you know, whatever. It could be later that day. It could be whatever time. And then this thing happens or whatever. And then it's like, oh, my God. 
I, I, you guys just told me I should listen in there. I was like, yeah, but I have found that sometimes you can hear, but then there's a whole step to acknowledgement, listening and putting it into action. And it is that fine tuning that gets you into a place of just sliding through life. You know, it's like you've got somebody that is giving you the information and telling you the whole time when you're listening, when you're not listening and you're trying to fumble your way through the, through life, it, it will make you feel beat down. But man, when you tune in and it is so much like you have to really be paying attention and really listening because it, and then, um, participating because they will tell I'm I'm telling you the most minuscule little things and they will tell you and it, seriously it, it makes your life so much easier so much more simple you know and uh, so and I know that is a part of you know where we're headed how we are going to become so much more connected like that it is this pulling free from our, our keeping our, our, um, it's like a restriction on our perspective to keep it so focused on this reality. And I know that's why they do it. That's why they keep you so focused because it is such an energy drainer. And there's so many people too, besides all the mass suicide, which that's already going on. There's already so many people who are so beat down and so scared. And this is what's so sad is like, that they just don't understand. Like, we can change this stuff. They're so upset, like, that they have to go to work and they don't make money. They can't get ahead. They have no time to themselves. It's like, all that can change. It's been different throughout history. And we can change it back to that. This was a little game. They tried to pull us in. They tried to suck us into their world. And a lot of people, you know, went in and a lot of people did some corrupt shit and horrible stuff to participate in this world. This world was always going to take more, 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 more. And, uh, you know, everybody had to have their own, their own um, line in the sand, their own, you know, acknowledgement of you've gone too far. You've pushed me too far. And this is one thing too. Another one of the videos that I keep seeing all so many of is the shit going on in schools. Now the doctor stuff too, like those nonstop. So you got the women scared of men. You got the people out trying to go viral fighting in parking lots with each other. You got the uh, husbands leaving their wives with all these kids you got oh my gosh I saw this woman yesterday with her two kids in a shopping cart and a guy trying to help them and she has she's homeless with these two little toddlers and I just know there's so much of that out there it's just fucked man and all of us we just all gotta come together and start you know put fill our shit in our shopping carts and head on out to the woods and start building communities <coughs> it seriously is the only way to uh you know it's what has been done it's always what has been done is to leave uh, leave the storm and go out and create our own world and then they come in and try and infiltrate and draw us back out but see we can't let that happen again and supposedly they're all being removed from the planet but in the cycles of earth in the cycles of life you always go back the everything leads to the other thing everything is one side of the other so everything has to play out all the time so we'll always go back to a time where people have to be reminded i don't think though that the planet is going to lower its vibration again but i don't know because i don't know every single thing about how the universe works i only am translating what they show me and tell me and making my own from the knowledge and stuff that they have shown me throughout my life of what things that they have brought me to increase my understanding so you know i can only understand you know, and per, or perceive and translate what it, to my own knowing. And that is what we all have. We can only understand, do our own knowing. And, uh, you know, the, but the more we're open and the more we're ready to expand, the more that we're ready to receive. And the more seeds that we take in 
to plant in a garden of self, the more you give the universe the opportunity to expand your thinking, to expand your understanding and your knowledge. So it's, um, you know, and the more that you, anything you do to participate with them, the more that you become a byproduct of the, your higher self. Because um, I'm telling you, it's, it's it's so crazy. Like the stuff that they'll tell you, just all little things, all the time. But you have to be listening. And it could be like, you know, uh, don't forget, go get that. Take that outside. Oh, get that done real quick. Oh, you should go ahead and start that. Like there's reasons when they tell you that stuff. I'm telling you, if you don't listen, you will see there's a reason why you should have listened. And I think so many times people don't realize that it's them talking. They think their mind is just all of a sudden talking to them and telling them this stuff. And uh, so they think their thoughts are telling them something that they don't have to participate or listen to their thoughts. Their thoughts are trying to distract them from what they're doing. But no, you have communication from your higher self and your guidance, and they're trying to keep you on track and keep you out of your thoughts, lost in your own mind, and keep you participating in the here and now. And so they are constantly telling you things to do. And you will see, when you start paying attention, you will see that it is a very, it, you'll, you'll see, I, you know, I'm, there, there's a whole thing to it. And there's a whole thing to like sharpening your your abilities and being able to do that in the in the whole purpose for that. So, anyways, let me think if I had if I had tried to cover everything because I'm gonna go in and watch that video um, and see like what these different people are saying. And every single time that I come across a video of anybody predicting anything, it's all stuff that I've been saying. And uh, so, you know, I think that. We're all picking up on the same information and, uh, you know, but, you know, it's hard to know exactly every little precise thing. Like, is it going to be a volcano or an earthquake that's about to go down or is it going to be this uh, stuff with the war? Like, it could be anything. Anything can go down. All I know is that it's going to be something that's going to be really um, explosive to get everybody's attention because that is how they got to get people to wake up. They got to get your attention. It's got to be this big snap, you know, and the, I'm not very good at snapping right there, huh? My fingers are so, um, it's weird. <coughs> and again, you know, I take in the minimal amount of chemicals that I can. So whatever it is, it's in the air. Uh, have they gone and infiltrated into the well water, what I'm getting my water from now? And, uh, you know, I know the air and, um, and also, uh, the magnesium. So I had just seen a, a herbalist nutrition person, whatever, talking about that you do need to take those magnesium baths. And then, you know, you see a video of them talking about the chlorine, showing how much chlorine is in the water and then put your hand in the thing in the water and then take it out and then test the chlorine. There's no chlorine in the water suddenly. Magically, it just went in all in you. So that is the absorption that we're getting in the chemicals. So, you know, you have to consider that when you go in and take a soak. But also, soaking in the magnesium is really good for our body, apparently. That it gives, um, we all need a lot more magnesium than we've been getting. And that is a good way to get it, is to soak it in in a bath. I did that yesterday. But, um... Like these, these feelings in my hand, like I can't get my hands to really, especially this one, trying to get it to open, even open the dryer is like such a, so hard. And then I keep getting these electrical shocks and then it feels like, like I can't get my fingers to, I can't, I can't even do, I can get through one line of a, one row of a crochet and that's a struggle. And uh, so I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, it's got to be some sort of a chemical thing. I'm going to keep trying the SIG because of the, um, you know, knowing what the um, symptoms were when they talked about that, you know, what is uh, what they were finding in people and finding in the water and stuff like that. And um, the symptoms from that 
match a lot of this stuff. So that is why I do that. But smoking a cigarette is really hard. It's so hard. Like, I swear to God, getting a couple puffs is hard. And I don't even get, like, I can take the hugest hit off of um, cannabis one, you know, joint. And take a huge hit, you know, fill my lungs up. And, you know, fine. And then this other stuff, you can take it in and it's like barely. And you're like, <coughs> It is um it's really hard and i and i don't know if that was partly with the filter maybe i should just take the filter off i think i'll try that try it with no filter and see because um they put stuff in that too and that is restricting and that is making it hard but anyways it's very very different inhalant than the other the other is more gentle but i do think that it is a heavier molecule. And I think that is how it's um, moving the smaller molecules. Because remember what they said about the the virus thing. It's such a tiny, tiny molecule. And so I think that the other ones are put, like, you know, smoke them. Like, but you got to tune into your body, see? You got to know. And that is the way it's always been. Not somebody to tell you what to do. You know, they have it to where they want to give you feeding schedules. You know, they want us completely dependent on them. They want our minds weak and dependent and sad and lonely. And uh, so, um, the but I think that the heavier molecule goes in, but then your body wants to cough it out, but it grabs everything. But and it, and it, you, it, it, it works more with the mucus, I think, is it kind of wraps around these other molecules that are smaller and more intrusive and it pulls them and then you cough them and it moves them out of you. And I have said that before about when old people will go into the hospital and the reason why they get pneumonia and so many of them die is because they come too weak with their coughing. Like you need a cough. You need to, to inhale something like that to get you to cough. And as um, for in the hospital, we would use these little machines to get people to slow Slowly breathe deep because when you smoke, you slowly inhale. So you slowly breathe deep, get down into the depths of your lung, and then you breathe out. And then, um, but when it puts that stuff in there, then when you cough, like when I cough, I can feel a lot of stuff moving around in there, and I don't feel sick at all. And uh, so that is where I was like, oh, I see, like why they're saying this works because it goes in there and it, it, um, it's the same thing as what they have used for these with this uh, these words you can't say i'll say it backwards and rm so if you put that the other direction and how that is like a transport carrier stuff how they did all this stuff which i saw some other horror things too is uh, there's some little octopus inside of um and uh, this octopus thing it, it starts spinning really fast and it's sharp and when you exert yourself and that they said that was why a lot of these um, players are just dropping because it starts spinning and it uh, cuts open their organs and stuff. So I, I don't know. This stuff is like I said, it's a fucking sci-fi horror movie. Um, but uh, so the um, that stuff going in and then you have that junk in there and you cough it up and it grabs hold of all that junk and pulls it up with it and so you constantly are removing all of the particles because when you're you're older and uh, you know for a lot of people a lot of people who are just I mean young people are getting pneumonia there is no activity, not breathing deep, not having healthy lifestyles like people don't realize they're sick because they've got unhealthy lifestyles. You're running too hard. You're taking in too many com um, additives and chemicals. You know, you're destroying your body. And so the, um, when you, um, I don't think where I was. Um, my joints are popping too. See when there's, I, I just know this is coming from some stuff. When, when my hair and stuff, I'm just it's so frustrating. And that's why, you know, like I do all these detoxes. I try and get all these chemicals out. And it's very frustrating when it just continues that they have this a way of assaulting us like this. It's just like, oh, so maddening. Um, and to be aware of it. 
And there's so many people who have no awareness. So they don't even know what's being done to them. And they're just, you know, blissfully happy. And uh, to me, I have complete awareness and frustration. You know, so I got to get a handle on all those emotions, you know, because there's a whole thing. You got to master your emotions, no matter which side of them you're on. And everything is about getting uh, control of yourself and awareness. And, you know, it's a completely step up, an evolution of your state of being. And so, anyways, uh, whatever I was saying about the, you know, the, um, oh, yeah, because the, the little machine that we would do in the hospital, they would have to take in this really slow, slow, slow breath. And then you'd make them... Um, blow it I, there was a they had to blow it out fast and then take it in slow and then blow it out fast and then you try and get them to get down deeper in their lungs and that is what the benefit of exercise is too because it makes you breathe deeper right now though it sounds like it's not safe to go out and exercise like you know but i do the calisthenics and stuff you know and dancing i don't think i'm gonna you know dance my but if i dance myself to death like because obviously we're inhaling these things too. Like it's not, you know, they have more than one method to get them in us, you know. Like I know Christy Alley, did, I, I feel certain that she did not take any of these things. So, I, I don't know. This is just super frustrating time. And everybody has to take their health under their own control. And, um... Man, I've seen so many things. I've just saw uh, stuff about headaches. I more stuff about eye color and uh, how your eye color is being influenced and affected by the chemicals inside of you and that they are reflecting the different things inside of your body, your different organs and stuff like that. Like there's whole so much stuff, you know, that is going to be helping us. Oh, but the really, oh, I was so excited about this. So when I went on TikTok this morning, there was this, um, it was like an ad or something, but there's not an ad. So, cause I tried to find it wasn't an ad. So I had to start trying to look up about it, but it was a vet and she was showing their new vibration machines that they use for the dogs that cure cancer and all this stuff, arthritis, all of it. And so it's a whole thing. And she shows like all different animals. And she's like, uh, she had a lizard, all of them. They all love it. They'll all just lay there on it. All of um, all of them get this great benefit. And she said, even people are using them. They're great for people. And so then when I started looking it up, I saw, oh, they're all over the place, these little vibration machines that people are using for exercising. So I'm going to, I'm, this, it said you had to call to find out about pricing. I'm sure it's going to be expensive as shit. So, um, but still, oh my God, I'm so excited because now they're starting to get this vibration stuff going, you know, more mainstream. And that is where everything is headed. And it is like this flipping of everything flipping and going and it is that so much more everything is so much more subtle than what you had um what i was expecting but it, and it's just so crazy too because even back when i was in 2015 and 2016 when i was telling the kids like we need to go get property we need to go get some land and then we can put a bunch of houses on it and then we'll just like have like our own little commune and they're all laughing at me like oh my god you're so crazy mom why would we do that that's stupid that's crazy why none of us could get along like that and all this stuff it's like no you guys don't understand and i kept trying to tell them and that you know they just laughed at me well i think they see the benefit now but you know that is how long you know, that I have been speaking out about this stuff, showing stuff about the sky, telling people, telling people, people are about to die. People are about to lose everything, you know? And so, you know, to me, it feels like finally we're here, but it's very traumatic, but it is so much more subtle. Everything is so much more subtle than what I was expecting, but I still think there's going to be a drama. There's going to be a huge drama. There's going to be more than one. There's going to be a lot, but, um, but there is that turning of the other direction. And so where we have things that are good, like I'm seeing so much more stuff about the quantum stuff and the money and health and all of that stuff. So it's coming in as the other is exposing itself, as the medical is exposing how corrupt it is and how it's killing people. 
And uh, there's the women now who are starting groups because the um, uh, doctors are not, they're just trying to prescribe them medicine that isn't for their best thing. There's a whole loophole there that women have found now that are, they're doing some sort of class action suit. There's going to be so many more class action suits against all of this stuff. It's all when people come together. It's when we come together, we know our own power. We stop fighting. We stop going out and trying to fight with other injured people. Like, I I, I just, I can't even get over how many of these um, Karen in the wild things. It's like everybody wants to get on the bandwagon. Everybody wants to show that they're fighting out there with somebody and uh, people fighting with uh, the other race is just is so stupid, you know. And uh, everybody's trying to show that they're the victim. Poor, poor me. Poor, poor me. Well, that's most people's attitude in the world. Most people feel like a victim in the li in their life. They don't feel like they have any power. They feel hopeless. They feel helpless. They feel sad and scared. And then you have people going out there and arguing and fighting with one another. It's like they should be going out and hugging each other. Somebody comes up and is a dick to you. You should say, oh, do you need a hug here? Do you want me to hug you? Or, you know, reach out and touch their arm. If they continue being a dick, use that ignore button and just walk away. You don't have to sit there and put yourself through that and all that. All of, like, people don't get, like, uh, that little video isn't worth all of the turmoil that you're creating inside of your own being for this nonsense. Like, it's, it's mental. But again, you know, people have to see it for themselves. People have to make these choices for themselves. People have to wake up for themselves. Nobody can make them. Nobody can force it. Everybody has to do it on their own. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse and more absurd and more absurd until everybody gets on the same page. And then once people get over their biases, over all their bullshit... You know, then we can start really doing something. I'm really hoping that for sure by spring. I told my daughter yesterday, I said, um, once it's spring, I want to have like a little weekend party here or something where everybody comes and helps me demolish the inside of that building. And I want to winterize it, get it cold, completely ready for winter. And then um, I want to get a camper or something, something. I want to go out and, you know, and uh, because I, I, I reminded my daughter too yesterday, I was like, I thought we were doing these Airbnb things. Like we got to get this one ready. I want to be able to rent it out next winter for ski season. And I got to get that one, that little building done so I can, you know, tear up the bathroom in here and all of that stuff. I want to get this all done and start doing that. And then, um, you know, I, my plans are so out from what they understand because they're all, you know, focused on the 3D. They haven't seen past that part. But so they still, she wanted to do the Airbnbs. Like, I still get one in Mexico. And I said, I want to get one in Scotland. I really want to go to Scotland. And it's been for so long now that I've had that draw. So, you know, I, I'm going to go once this stuff stops. Um, once it, things start shifting the other direction. I just thought it would have by now. But once it does, like I have, you know, plans of things that I want to go and do. And I'm not going to go out just because, you know, I mean, if places are being burnt down, I'm not going to go out and be a fool. Like, I, you know, us stuff that we are going to have to continue paying attention to because these people, you know, pretty soon, uh, these uh, Karens in the wild, we're going to have people stabbing each other. Like I, some of them have turned into brawls where things start flying. So, you know, it won't be long before it's turned into people being jumped, people uh, being shot, stabbed, you know, is if people just can't, they just can't wake up. They're just stuck. And, um, so Anyways, uh, but I'm going to go watch that video and I will come back and do another one. I think I covered everything. If I didn't, I'll do it in the next one. I don't know. But anyways, those are um, some of the things that I was thinking about. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.